Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's New Year's special. Today, uh, it's my turn to give Brett a choice of three albums, which he will choose one of them, which we will then listen to. Um, we did this last week. Um, so if you haven't watched this, that video, please do, where Brett chose three albums. And I, well, gave me a choice of three albums. I chose one of them. Um, so that was Gabrielle. So this year, the way I'm doing it, um, I wanted to choose three albums that I was familiar with, or at least partially familiar with. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll put the, share the screen for the first one, um, and it will become clearer. So the first one is The Best of M People. Um, this is an album that I've had since I was a, a kid. It was released in 1998, so I would have got it as a teenager. Um, and it's kind of, I'd say, I got this idea based on Gabrielle. I'd kind of say, you know, same sort of time period, kind of the same sort of line of music. I mean, the voice is very different from Heather Small, but it's also that same kind of like, you know, nice uplifting music. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a really good album. I've listened to it, well, when I was a kid, I used to listen to it quite a lot. Uh, lots of well-known songs on there, Testify, Search for the Hero, Moving On Up, Angel Street, One Night in Heaven, Ichiku Park, um, Colour My Life. Maybe some less familiar ones later, you know, further down the list as well. Um, but yeah, it's just a really good sort of uplifting album, you know, it's what the M people do. And just a really good, good um, album, really. Okay, so that was the big first <laughs> choice. The first one. So second one, let me just get this up. The reason I'm doing this separately is so you don't see it in the, in the screen, like then I'll be giving it away. So I'm kind of gonna put it up now myself, one second. Um, okay, I'm ready. So the second one is this one. This is Nebraska by Bruce Springsteen. Um, so, I don't know if I actually own this album myself. My dad certainly does. He's got all the Bruce Springsteen albums. Um, released in 1982. Um, what's interesting about it, if you can see here, um, the songs on the Nebraska deal with ordinary down on their luck, blue collar characters who face a challenge or a turning point in their lives. So the songs also treat the subject of outsiders, so criminals, mass murderers, and little hope for the future. Um, to get someone sentenced to the death in the electric chair. Now, unlike previous albums, which often exude energy, youth, optimism, and joy, the vocal tones of Nebraska are solemn and thoughtful, with fleeting moments of grace and redemption woven through the lyrics. And what was interesting as well, because of the album's somber content, Springsteen chose not to tour in support of the album, making it Springsteen's first major release that was not supported by a tour um, until 2019. Western Stars album. So, um, yeah, so with this album, go through the songs. It's a short album, 40 minutes long. Um, Atlantic City is quite a well known song. Um, Highway Patrolman is a song that I really like as well. So it's kind of like a, um, almost like a story of a lot of some of these songs. You kind of really got to listen to the lyrics. Um, it's a really interesting, quite unusual, unique, sounding album and I, and I really like it so yeah that's bruce springsteen nebraska um and the last album get it ready Okay, I'm ready, so let's share the screen. So I was trying to think of like albums that I had at home. Um, and I know that I've definitely got this one. This is Solid Bronze Great Hits by The Beautiful South. Um, so I used to really like The Perfect 10, Perfect 10. And I think that's possibly why my dad bought it for me, maybe for my birthday might have been. Um, it's a really good song, and I remember I used to listen to this album when I was, when I was younger. I used to go through the album. Um, it's quite a long one. Um, 
I'm not sure about the, the songs towards the end, certainly the, the sort of first half of the album. Um, quite a few of them are quite well-known songs. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of a, I've never been like a huge Beautiful South fan, but just thought I'd choose an album that at the time I was familiar with, like if I listen to this now, a lot of these songs are going to be quite new to me or even the songs that I did know I haven't heard for years, a little bit like Gabrielle. Um, so yeah, gone for that one. Um, now like you, I do have a, and I, I, I think I know which one you're going to choose. Really? Because um, I don't. <laughs> so it's great that you do. I honestly. Yeah. Okay, well, okay. yeah. So um, we'll see if I'm right or not. Um, so, yeah, they are the, the three cho choices. What, which one are you going to go for? Oh, man. Honestly, it's a real tough one. So as soon as um, people came up, I thought, I'm sure this is probably going to be the one I'm going to pick. I don't know. Um, just with just some Gabrielle and it's that same sort of 90s and Heather Small's voice and the, it's weird so I probably only know maybe three well-known and people songs there might be others I might recognise so that's what made me initially intrigued by that um, and then Bruce Springsteen um, again the only song I knew on the album is Atlantic City and I think we talked about that one previously as well um, and I know how much you enjoy sort of Bruce Springsteen. I think to do because I've never actually listened to a Bruce Springsteen album before. I've only ever listened to songs of his, and only ever listened to ones that I know and like. Um, and the fact it sort of tells a story, I know it'd be something could be quite interesting um, about that. And if they're quite similar to Atlantic City, because I said I do like that song, um, that really intrigues me as well. And then Beautiful South again, very similar with them people. Um, band, I, as soon as you saw that album cover as well, some of the empty work just felt really nostalgic looking at those, to just sort of iconically remember those as well. Again, can tell you a small handful of beautiful South songs, and ones I do know, I really enjoy it. It, it is definitely my sort of style, my taste, um, Move South. So I am really struggling um, to pick, and I was almost going to maybe number, number it, yeah. and get you to pick a random <laughs> number potentially. However, I think I'm going to bite the bullet and I think I'm going to go with my initial instincts and I'm going to go for M people. Um, the best of just because, yeah, quite similar to Gabrielle, it would be nice to keep that sort of this genre going in some regards. Um, as I said, I know uh, some of their songs, the ones I do, I absolutely love and I don't think they get played often enough. It's another classic, isn't it? Magic 105.4. Yeah. If you don't understand that reference, if you watch our previous video, um, Lee explains it um, a lot better. And I, I'm hoping that maybe there'll be some undiscovered songs of theirs that I've listened to that I could really enjoy and end up in like on a, a playlist. So not regrettably, but with difficulty, I'll go for M People, the best of. Okay, I thought you were going to go for the Beautiful South. That was the one I thought, because you, uh, you it, said that, it's your sort of style of type of music. That's the only reason I kind of thought you might, you know, might go for that. Okay. Yeah, I absolutely love the beautiful South, and it, it, I would enjoy to, to to do that. Um, but it's not. I also like M people as well. But it, yeah, it was. It, it could be an evil, but yeah, we're going for M people this time round. Good choice. Good choice. So yeah, M people. It is. So looking forward to. Well, I'm looking forward myself to listening to it. It's been many years since I've I've heard it. Um, I did actually. I'll be honest. I did listen to one of their songs. What, yesterday after when i chose the album before oh, i haven't heard that for a long time i quickly play it on youtube um that was pretty good so um yeah there we go m people best of m people is going to be the song the album we're going to be listening to so we'll be back with you guys in a second to uh let you know what we thought of it so we've now listened to the album and brett is going to tell us what he thought of it Right, maybe I should get the negativity out straight away. Um, I was a little disappointed in some regards with this album, I have to say. Um, but I think that was down to me. I think I probably put a bit too much high expectations on it. Um, but um, over, listen, I, I love them people. I love what they do. 
I think I found by the end of it where actually as much as I love them people, I love Heather Small's voice, fun of it, I think I found it maybe a little repetitive and a bit too much M people at, at one time. Because it's weird. <laughs> cause for me, for M people, it's, it's sort of a song that it doesn't get played all the time. And just when it comes on, like I said, I love it. It makes me smile. But then it, it's almost like a lunar clip. You don't hear it again until ages and ages um, away. However, I can totally get, you know, if you had this album from early days and you could probably really enjoy it. Um, I also found a lot of the songs. I mean, if you take the, the three main songs, and I think, let's be honest, they probably are Search, Search for a Hero, um, Moving Up, and um, um, One Night in Heaven. They're sort of their three biggest main hits, really. I felt like all the other songs could have been just uh, almost like a carbon copy of one of those three songs in some regards. Um, I personally really like um, Search for a Hero, and I was maybe hoping to get a little bit more. Cause I don't know, I always found them people as more as they sort of easily listen to band rather than a dance um band but when this is album, actually it's mostly dance music they generally do which i've got nothing against i absolutely love that i think maybe being critical i would like to have a bit more of their sort of search for the hero type songs because there's another song which i thought was m people but it turns out it wasn't m people it was just heaven small around called proud i don't know if you know that one which is like search for a hero um uh, yeah, and I said after maybe I was just expecting to have a few more songs like that. But see, as we go through these, you'll probably find I'm not actually that. I quite quite lo- enjoyed quite a lot of the songs, but I think as an album, I, I found it maybe a little bit too too much of of the same really. Um, but I think that that's probably me being really really critical. I still like having people. I still like the album. It's definitely definitely not one of the worst things I've ever had to listen to um, on this channel. Um, and I think I just maybe set myself up to expect something a little bit different than what I actually got, but I still did enjoy it. And what, yeah. I, what I will add as well, actually, they were actually what I really liked about them is actually there were songs that I didn't know, which I was hoping for, and actually really like. And actually, one of them I probably think is one of my favorite songs, which I, I didn't actually know before. So that was also the biggest, biggest positive for this album for me. Yeah. But even though I would chose the album and I offered it to you, it, it's not because I didn't choose it because I knew that I really liked it. It was just because I just knew that I owned it. I was, I was trying to choose three albums that I actually knew or listened to at some point, or at least had at home. Um, I, I actually echo everything that you say, except I'd probably go even further and say, I wasn't just disappointed by the album. Oh, I didn't particularly like it to be honest so okay. everything you've said i agree with but i'd probably go even further one step one little step further so yeah my favorite song is search for the hero um and now you can say it yeah i there weren't really other songs like that it, there were it was a much more of a kind of dancey kind of album and like you <laughs> even though i do own the album or had it as a child I didn't actually realize they were as dancey as, as they were. <laughs> um, and I think the reason I actually gave you this album that came to my head was because I thought of the song Proud, which is which I knew <laughs> was by Heather Small, not by M People. It was just Heather Small. And I think that was, and I realized I don't actually have an album with Proud on it, but I do have the M People album. So I thought, oh, well, there we go. There we go, there's an album I could, I could offer you. So yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, it was quite repetitive. It was for me. It was too sort of, I don't know, disco-y, dancey kind of kind of thing. Um, and I think as well, if, if we go back to Gabrielle, which actually turned out to be very different to Gabrielle, we kind of made the comparison, but actually I think it's quite different. Um, with Gabrielle, the album you, which you, you told me this, the album was listed in order of re- of the when it was released, all the songs were released. Um, now the problem with this album, greatest so-called greatest hits album, is that the first half of the album were more well-known songs, and we got to like the second half, and then it, to me it just felt like they were just um, taking up space on the album, just to kind of, you know, like just extra songs for the album. So 
it, it kind of got worse as it, as it went on. I like, heard all the songs that I knew and kind of liked to a certain degree. And then I just, like, ah, what's this? <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. definitely it's definitely a football feel to it. There's definitely a game of two halves, was in the first half of the album, and I was going to say it is definitely the better better half. And yeah, it's hard when you're not big hardcore and people fans to then say the second half is in the nicest possible way, maybe just fillers, really. But saying yeah, that, a lot of these songs were were released songs, so um, obviously just not as big as other. And the other thing I noticed, obviously, and people. It seems to only have their song, their big songs were like sort of just top, what we call like in the top 10. Didn't really have like number ones, number twos as such. Um, and that probably sums up the album as well. It's a very good sort of top 10 kind of. Um, I mean, they all seem to just miss out on really, really, you know, getting big chart hits. I mean, big songs, but just a sort of a, a band that sort of hits the top 10, really. And, and now I can see why. But, um, Hopefully, as we go through the songs, it'll probably make a bit more sense as well. Yeah, just one other thing, looking at my notes that I put here. So Heather Small very much relies on her backing singers. They play quite, they play a big role in, in pretty much all, all the songs. Um, one in particular, which we'll come to. Um, so first song was Testify. So I was kind of looking forward to hearing this one because I hadn't heard it for so long and I kind of forgotten how it, how it went. So I wrote here, it's been, I wrote down, it's been many years since I've heard this. Um, fairly decent, but nothing special. A solid start. I thought the song actually had quite a few different parts to it. And it kind of grew on me as the song went on. But it, it didn't blow me away or anything, but it was, you know, a solid, a solid start to the album. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know the song before, and then I listened to the album, and then I listened to it actually a second time whilst I had um, just some Wikipedia notes up. Um, and so this was, this was actually a new song for the album, like we had on Gabrielle. Um, she had a couple of new hits, and this was actually a new song for them. Um, and this is obviously, as you said, you know, it's a bit slow, mellow, sort of more of like an R&B kind of thing. And I thought, oh, yeah, this is them people I kind of no remember. This is almost like a, a, a very similar to, I know we keep referring to Proud, and I like I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned it as well. I'm glad that you liked that song and was also disappointed it wasn't on this, um, on this album. This was like a proud, like the song like Proud, that sort of slow kind of deep meaning. And I actually quite like this. I, I quite enjoyed this one. I think, but I said, I do like this side. Of, not that I don't like the dance side of them people, because I, I definitely do. Um, but for me, when I think of MP, I do generally think of this side. So it was glad to have this style on here um, as we go through the album towards the end. We lose a lot of that as we go along, but I actually did like the song very much so. And I said one I didn't know before, so yeah, it was a good start for me. Yeah, just to be clear, I knew that Proud wasn't on this album. I knew it wasn't MP. I knew it was just uh, okay. Heather Small. But I, I, yeah, I kind of wish it was had been on it was on the album, but yeah. Um, so the second one was Search for the Hero. Um, so yeah, I really love this song always have done it's really uplifting loving the back the backup singers as well just a really good song and i wrote down here not expecting to find a better song on the album and that was to prove the case this was the definitely the best the best song on the album for me and as you said it earlier in the introduction it is a kind of like slower song um but then there just aren't enough of these songs on the album it turns out it's too too dancey for me um so, yeah, just a really good, uplifting, powerful song um, that I really like. Yeah, so like I said, for it's obviously a song I knew. It's, it's always my favourite when I played MP. This has always been, if you watch your favourite MP song, it would be this one here. Still really enjoyed listening to it. And as we learned from the album, obviously, th their background is dance music. Um, and there's no denying that. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, and that's you can definitely tell, I think, especially when we listen to some of the early stuff as we get on some later, um, away from the dance stuff, and they do a bit more of this sort of what I would call is more the Heather Small kind of her more having a prominent voice or influence maybe on the songs. Hence, and when obviously she broke away and did some stuff like Proud, um, that's the stuff that we probably really enjoyed um, a lot more. So, as you said there, it was just a shame not to have a bit more of this style um, on the album. 
Um, but again, yeah, this is probably actually turned out to be probably my second favourite song um, on the album in the end. I'm kind of interested and intrigued to find out what your favourite is. Um, okay, so the next one was Moving On Up. Again, a song that I know well. Obviously, it makes sense that I know these songs because I, I have the album, I had it as a kid, so I have listened to it quite a few times. Um, but I still recognised it anyway, like not just from the, I don't know, like I just knew the song. So moving on up, a bit more of a disco song, a bit of a classic. The chorus is quite good, um, but that's about as good as it gets. I mean, it's, it's just not really my type of thing, but, you know, it's, it's okay. Yeah, very much like you there. It's, a, it's again, a very popular and people song. Uh, I've always liked it. Um, and um, you can't help but listen to it and sort of smile on it. Good sort of good feeling type song. And it's that good mix, you know, with um, sort of being dancey, but kind of poppy dancey, I would say, um, in a way. Um, uh, as I said, not always been my absolute favourite of people, but I've always enjoyed it. It's great to have it on on here. And I can see why it was such a big hit across across Europe, really, and remind me again about sort of their dancey background. But like I said, this is more sort of definitely a, a pop um a pop version um pop pop dance version of the song of theirs yeah next one was angel street this sounded like or I'm pretty sure it was like a continuation of moving on up at least to start with just it sounded exactly the same in the beginning it's not bad i know it i know the song but not as well maybe as the, the previous uh, three songs um that we you know before this um so yeah, kind of similar to moving on up, I guess. It's okay. Yeah, I can see how you sort of continue that. I was put here, it's almost like a real sort of dance version of Search for a Hero um, as well. And I generally thought it was like a dance mix of Search for a Hero, just unrecognizable in a way. Um, I didn't know this one. I actually really like this one. Um, I'll probably say this is maybe my third favorite, maybe joint third with Testify. Um, and um, yeah, I said it again, it's kind of had a sort of a dance but also like a pop feel. And I said because it felt so similar to moving on up a little bit, but also like search for a hero, like a dance version. Um, I actually thought I, I quite quite enjoyed that there, really. Um, so yeah, surprised I didn't know it before. Glad I've heard it, and yeah, it'd, it'd be sort of third for me. Okay, then we had one night in heaven again. I knew this one very well. Chorus is pretty good, quite catchy, but I just thought the song in general is nothing special, but I like it for the chorus. One night, one night in heaven. But yeah, the chorus is pretty good, um, but the rest of it, a bit, not so sure. Yeah, you're definitely right. The chorus is definitely the, the standout bit of this song. Um, again, it's a song anew. Um, always liked it. Um, and still really, really... I uh, enjoyed it. Again, I could see why it was such a big hit and did well across Europe. And again, it's sort of that in-between of sort of dance and kind of pop and also Heather Small's um, strong voice in it um, as well. So, yeah, um, absolutely really, really enjoy it. Um, and I can't really say much more than that, really. Um, it'd be nice to have a bit more stuff as well in there. But, um, yeah, great, great, great tune. Great to hear it, hear it again on the album. The next up was Ichiku Park. Now, I don't know how much research you've done. I haven't done any research. I think you mentioned you were looking on Wikipedia. I seem to remember this is like a cover version of a different song. You can tell me if you know about that or not. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Um, but anyway, there's a slightly different feel to this song compared to the others. I remember it well once it came on. Pretty good. And I thought Heather is, Heather, this is the interesting one. So this is where Heather is actually working with the backup singers, like, Asking each other quest asking questions and getting answers, which I quite liked. Um, and this is definitely one of the better songs on the album for me, possibly even in, up in second place after Search for the Hero. Um, so I actually quite I actually quite like this song. Yeah, um, you're right. I did have Wikipedia, and I have got some notes on others if they were covers. This one, I I, I don't remember if I saw if it was a cover. It doesn't mean it wasn't. I just don't remember seeing or making a note um, of that. And yeah, I actually really quite like this one as well. I said, I like the choir and the backing singers you said there, and it's all merged in really well. And like I said, you can tell this is before 
um, have a small maybe, maybe felt like the pinnacle main points of them and people. It was a bit, maybe a bit more balanced with everyone. Um, and yeah, so it's just a really nice sort of blend uh, mixed with good lyrics. Um, and I have just been, it just felt very M people, what I feel as being M people. Um, didn't know it. I'm glad to be introduced to it. And it sort of had that sort of um, Motown, again, it's, it's a slower type of song as well. So, um, yeah, really like this one as well. Mm. I'm surprised that you don't know most of these songs. I, up to now, I've, I know all of them. Again, it probably does help that I've had <laughs> cut the album and listened to it. But I think these are all quite you know released song they would have been on the radio at the time um yeah they might yeah that's how I was, i'm surprised in myself as well and um and i said i was going through the oh i'll you know release songs and i sometimes I'm surprised that I, I i didn't recognize um and that's why I, I, partly why i probably chose this album over the beautiful south one because i probably knew a lot more beautiful south songs with them people i probably like i said probably knew those three hands down that was it um, and that's what I was hoping to hear hear a bit more. Okay. Next up was Sight for Sore Eyes. Again, I knew this one, but not as well. Didn't seem quite as, oh, well, it was familiar, but not as familiar maybe in terms of most of the others. Um, it's lively, I'll give it that, but I just wasn't wasn't too keen on it. You know, it's it's a bit dancey, not not really my, my, my cup of tea really. Yeah, I think it was a very definitely the 90s dance kind of craze and this one here. Um, felt like they and people the dance style of um and the um and people. Um again for Heather's voice in this one was actually really, really, really good on this one. Um and I said it just feels this or sort of, some of these tracks like these where I said she doesn't she's not the prominent main person, she's just sort of as as I don't want to use the sort of wrong words here. I feel like she's more of an equal with everyone in the band here, so it just blends in really nicely. So, like I said, it didn't stand out massively. Um, but again, it, it was a nice song, and definitely in this first part of the album, on the better side to, to enjoy, really. So, yeah, next up we had Just For You. This was a, a, probably the, the song I was really sort of looking forward to, because I, I knew the song, but I hadn't heard it for so many years and kind of forgot what it was like, but I knew that I quite liked the chorus. Um, so yeah, it's good to hear it after so long. It's a good song. There's some nice elements to it. I mean, again, it's not an amazing song. It's probably, I, probably I'd say up there in third place um, behind Ichiku Park, you know. Um, a good song and a little bit kind of like, you know, the, a bit slow, I guess, as well. Like the chorus, just for you, well, how would you do? Just a nice, nice song. <laughs> yeah, um, very nice song, but I'm going to sort of up it a little bit. And this was probably my standout song of, of the album, actually. Um, maybe purely because I, I didn't know this song. Um, and it, again, as you said, there, it's a little bit slower um, and does have more of the sort of search for the hero kind of vibe to it um great lyrics heather sings fantastic in it and um it, it stuck with me and uh, i i really enjoyed it and i said it would probably be my standout song of the album my personal favorite from the album again like i said just because i said i didn't know it and it, it was my grasp of you know again something very similar to proud <laughs> or search for the heroes um from this so yeah massive thumbs up for me there and I, I'm glad and it will definitely go on to sort of my next playlist or next CD I ever make as well what were you doing in the 90s weren't you listening to the radio <laughs> I said I absolutely love the 90s I said there was so much out there um, I was probably just in, in trance with absolutely everything else um, as well really and yeah maybe I should slap myself a little bit on the hand and realise it's especially I said it's not like I didn't know them people didn't like their stuff the stuff I knew did, um, maybe should have made more of an effort to, uh, to to listen to a lot of their other stuff because I probably would have liked it um, there would have been no denying that just I said there was just a lot of other a lot of other music out there at the time as well yeah the more I think about it maybe I do know all these songs just because I've got the album I guess so yeah kind of makes sense um, but I'm pretty sure something like Just For You was quite popular song i don't know did you check on the wikipedia how it did in the charts yeah some of them i did put how they did uh, for this one i didn't it seems um 
uh, it's probably the late ones I've kind of made more of a note on. But um, I said it, it probably did get played. It, it, it were released. Um, I said maybe I just turned the radio station or you know just walked out of a shop when it was about to play. Maybe it, it just <laughs> passed me by um, ever so slightly. Okay, next one was Colour My Life. Again, I recognise the song. Um, it's okay, but it doesn't excite me. <laughs> That's all I can say. Um, yeah, so as we were talking about how did it in the charts, this one that I've written here came 35th in the charts. Um, this actually also kind of reminded me a little bit of the Petra Boy. So again, we do have that sort of dancey kind of feel to it. But this one almost had like a, a pop, dance, funk, soul. It had all this sort of stuff to it. This was probably my surprise song on the album. Again, I didn't know it. It obviously wasn't a, a massive hit, but I quite liked it. There's something about it, and I can't quite put my finger on it, um, that I, I quite enjoyed. So even though it's not in like my top three slash four, um, it was something that I would, I would definitely want to listen to again and could consider putting on a playlist um, because it, it did surprise me in, in some ways. I think it's something that maybe if I listen to it a few more times to so really enjoy it um, a little bit more. And this is like sort of like what we're now talking about sort of early and people stuff in the dance kind of things. But um, yeah, it surprised me and I, I quite liked it. Mm. How Can I Love You More? Again, I know the songs, classic sort of 90s disco sound. The chorus is catchy, but uh, all overall, not, not an amazing song. You know, we're getting to the stage now where I wouldn't say I'm losing my patience with them people, but I'm kind of. It's kind of okay. I can see where this is going. It's a bit kind of too sort of dancey for me now. It's the, the, the you know the better songs have have passed us, you know, have gone have gone by now, and yeah, didn't really enjoy it. Yeah, so this is definitely more dancey songs. So this is what I found was obviously their first song that they ever um, released, and um, yeah, it, it's okay. I can you get it. You know, there's early stuff. You have to have people who do really fantastic well. I think and people with time needed their time to you know, grow and get popularity and stuff. Um, as well. And again, it, it's hard to criticise, you know, in terms of how they want to put things, but it's weird. I, I don't know if you feel the same. In my mind, it would have made sense to have a lot of these dancey ones of their early stuff at the start of the album for some reason. Not to sort of get them out of the way, but just have them there. And then, you know, they're more sort of later stuff and definitely some of these slower stuff more towards the, the end of the album. So I kind of feel like, yeah, in a different mindset, mindset at the start, and then suddenly you need to have a you're not in the quite right mind to be having this sort of stuff here as well. But I said that's, I mean, I don't create albums, so I don't really know can criticize too much. But that's how I feel, and, and, and that's a shame because I think it's what's the downfall of the album. Because like you, as we come along now, it, it does start to feel a little bit tiresome and um, probably need to have listened to it and maybe in two separate breaks. Yeah, so the next one was Dreaming. Again, I know the song. Never been a huge fan of it, but on second thoughts, you know, after listening to it, it's actually all right. It's actually perhaps better than some of the few of the previous few tracks. I'm not saying it's right up there with, like, uh, you know, the top three, but it's bit better than the, the pre previous few. Yeah, so I saw here, this is also um, a brand new song. So this is actually the last song they ever released. And so it was interesting having it right next to their first just, ever song yeah. released. Um, I, I think it was obviously, it was kind of had a sort of catchy tune to it and a catchy chorus. Um, not sure how I overall feel about it. It does feel, you know, quite modern, new style and people. Um, again, Heather Small's voice is the main prominent points of it there. Um, it, it was good, but I feel it was just not as good as some of the songs that I'm more familiar with or the other ones that I enjoyed more, really. But um, not not the worst, definitely not the worst song um, on there. So the next one was Open Your Heart. I recognised it. I do know it. Now, the, I've got to criticise this one because it builds up like Ichiku Park. The build-up's pretty good. It feels, I don't know, just like Ichiku Park. But then when it gets to the chorus, like the climax, it's not Ichiku Park. It's not, it's not as good as Ichiku Park. It, it, just the chorus isn't very, isn't very good. So it you know, gets up really well, builds up, and a bad, bad climax. A bit of a letdown for me, this song. Didn't like it. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I've put something I've said this song has real potential. 
I wasn't sure if I recognised it. Um, I think probably I, I don't, but it, it sounded really familiar. Um, and um, the chorus was very catchy. And I said it did feel like it was in my head um, towards the end there. But I said it, it felt like it could have, it was really hard to explain. I think maybe you said it there, maybe it's, it was just not as good as Jude Park, where it could have just taken it to the next level. It had all the potential of being a really good top song, but just, it, it, it was hard. It just felt like it was, it, it was missing something. I said, good lyrics, good catch calls, but I don't know, it just, yeah, maybe just needed um, Heather Small to maybe take his own song and do what she wants with it to push it to that sort of next level. So, yeah, good, but missing missing something yeah so up to now up to that point i've i knew all the songs on there to some degree whereas the next five the last five that we're going to go through i didn't actually recognize any of them i think but that probably means that i just i turned off the cd once once i got this far down i probably wasn't enjoying it um so yeah don't look any further didn't recognize it um this was a much slower song i thought um and it had a, I described it as like an African kind of chorus. I can't remember, there was some kind of, sounded a bit like African style, but you know, not, not great to be honest. Yeah, so yeah. this one was actually a cover. Um, I don't, didn't know the original um, either to be honest. And yeah, I just said it's sort of a slower R&B soul kind of feel to it there. Um, uh, it was okay. I, I kind of like the feel of it as well and could see myself enjoying it. But I said, maybe I was just getting a bit tired of, of the album. And again, it, I was just now still comparing a lot of these songs now to what I've been listening to previously. And unfortunately, it just didn't match or live up to what I'd listened to already, unfortunately. So it's a shame. And it seems quite critical, but that's where it goes sometimes. Next up was Sunday. Again, didn't know it. I just kind of describe it as like a filler, a filler for the album, just kind of offers nothing, didn't like it. Yeah, um, again, this is also um, a cover. Again, I didn't know the original either. Um, I kind of personally it felt a bit boring and maybe maybe that was a bit harsh. I think maybe your explanation, maybe just being like a, a filler song might be a better thing. Because if this was like a 13-track album, it'd still be a fantastic, great album. It didn't have to go as, as far as that but I suppose if they were released hits then why not put them on there I guess um, but yeah sort of uh, okay but again as I said before it just doesn't live up to the, the song I've listened to previously and we had Renaissance it's perhaps a little bit, a bit better than the previous song but still nothing special for me yeah, so this is like a, a, a dancier version of um, almost like Open Up Your Heart. And it was the same thing, the same way like Open Your Heart, so Open Your Heart, you know, was kind of missing something, could take next level. This was the same. I felt like it had a bit of potential. I liked it. There's something to it, but just, it, it just wasn't as good as um, the other ones. Yeah, then we had Fantasy Island. Um, so this <laughs> kind of, Reminded me of my childhood, not because of the song, because of the Fantasy Island. It's a place in Vale Farm, uh, <laughs> in Wembley, where I used to go as a child, sometimes, especially like on someone's birthday, like a, a big children's play area. So it just reminded me of that. Yeah. But the song itself, um, I don't know, it was a bit lower tempo perhaps than some of the others. It's building up. I mean, this one wasn't, wasn't bad for a second half of the album track, you know, for this. Second half of the album is probably one of the, the better ones on there, perhaps. But like I said, for me, it was more about kind of nostalgia from um, going to Fantasy Island <laughs> rather than the song itself. Um, yeah, we could probably spend more time talking about Fantasy Island at Bell Farm than this, um, this song, potentially. Um, I, I can't add more to that one there. It's kind of what I've been saying about the other song. But you're right, I think this is out of the second half. This is probably the better of the worst half. Um, had sort of a, a generally good M people feel to it. Um, but I can unfortunately, it's the same notes as I said, the other ones, good potential, but I said it's just not as good as the other song. And it, 
feel feel bad and feel like broken metal just saying that, but it's just how I was feeling with with the album, unfortunately. Um, and like I said, maybe if I'd you know this to the first half one time, and then maybe this another time, I may have been able to do different. But so I was just I, I just wasn't living up to what I'd heard previously. So then we had what a fool believes the last song definitely seemed to be lower paced and just a kind of average end to the album wasn't one of the worst songs wasn't one of the best songs just yeah okay that's it we're done thank you very much good night <laughs> um so i was surprised i thought oh hang on i actually recognize this song i thought we'd have highly recognized highly in the songs on here and then it turns out it was a cover uh, but i just didn't recognize the title there was a song i, I did know um it's a song that i I really like actually the original I'm talking about. Um, this I thought was actually a good cover. It's just not as good as the original, but it did make me think I would probably like to see and people, even though they've done a, a few covers on here, it'd be nice for them to do covers of songs that um, I would know because I think they do quite a good take on it, whether it be on a dance d- dance way or um, I'm going to refer to it as the heather small kind of way. Um, I feel it'd be, be quite good there. So yeah, like I said it was a nice song, nice way to end the album. And I said, unfortunately, just not as as good as the original, but a, a good cover. Yeah. So how would you sum up the album? Um, yeah. So what I said there at the start and pretty much has been saying throughout um, the album here. First half, really, really good. Um, it did feel a bit repetitive to me towards um, the end. Um, I still really like the album. I still think there's a lot more positives and negatives um, to it overall, I would say. I'm really glad that there were songs that I didn't recognise or didn't know and I've, I've taken something from them, from the album. So for me, a really successful album in those regards. Um, I just feel like you probably less of maybe those filler songs and just concentrate more on the ones that know and like. So yeah, that's, I think, overall how I probably feel about the album. Yeah, for me, I was a little bit disappointed. I mean, I... I kind of knew what the album was like. I knew I didn't absolutely love it, like when I was younger, listening to it. Um, But even so, um, some of those songs in the second half were quite disappointing. Um, And yeah, I would have liked to have seen more kind of songs like Search for the Heroes, those kind of style of songs, slower paced songs. Um, And... Again, look, we, we've just listened to Gabrielle previously to this, which I really liked. So it's a bit of a come down from that. Um, so, yeah, a bit disappointing. But at the same time, it was good to listen to the album again after all these years. Um, listen to some songs that I hadn't heard for so many years. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it was it was nice to listen to. But just overall, can't help but feel a little bit disappointed by it a bit feel a little bit let down by it <laughs> um so yeah that concludes our album review of the what's it called the best of M people is that the name of the album mm-hmm. um and yeah if you've got any requests let us know um and we can get you involved as well in the video if you want to um and we will see you again for the next one thank you and goodbye <laughs>